it's me, Katie Beth again. And today, I'm reviewing the Tim Burton Nightmare Before Christmas cross-stitch kit. Now, it's not going to be a complete unboxing because I already did that and I lost that footage. But I'll try to reenact it as best as I can. So here we have the Nightmare Before Christmas cross-stitch kit. I did get it on sale for $7.99, but it's basically on sale absolutely anywhere I could find it. The suggested retail price is $9.99 in the U.S. And the two places I ordered it were Target and Amazon. Now Target, I ordered this all the way back in August. And by late September, it still hadn't got to me. So Target just gave me a refund and said, uh, sorry. But I still wanted this. So I looked up on Amazon. They had it for $7.99 also. The same price as Target had it for sale. And they shipped it to me in two days. I've been having a ton of problems with buying things on Target.com, but that can be a story for another day. So, back to this box. It's really cute. It's really small. I was expecting... I was honestly expecting a maybe flatter and wider box. Like, I thought the box would at least be, like, this big. So, when it was added to one of my other packages, I didn't even think it had come in yet. So, diving into this, it does say it has four patterns included, and the back says, Bring Jack Skeleton, Selly, and Zero off the screen. Perfect for crafters of any skill level, this kit includes a mini book with simple cross-stitch instructions and four easy patterns, one of Jack Skeleton, two of Jack and Sally, and one of Zero the dog. Three pieces of 4x4 four four cotton adia cloth, a number three embroidery hoop in which to stitch and display designs, and two tapestry needles, four skeins of embroidery thread, and it's listed for ages seven and up. So opening it up, it did have a little sticker seal, but I already took it off. Here is the book. I was actually very impressed with this instruction book. Talks about the type of fabric, the types of supplies it has. This book is very nicely made. Talks about the needles and the thread, hoop and stitching, some more about stitching, and basically goes into a little more detail. The back stitching section was kind of lost on me, it just seemed like the exact same thing. And then finally, patterns in the back. And then that's it, just says who designed the book. And it's a very nicely designed book. So next it did have the four four by four pieces of cloth. I've already stitched on these, but these were blank and there were originally four of them. However, I've been taking this around with me everywhere so I can just work on it whenever I have free time. And I seem to have lost the third one. Next, as it says, it did come with two embroidery needles. Uh, one I ended up bending pretty badly because the thread gets so knotted, I was using the needle to pull at the knot and it just bent the needle a ton. But the other one stayed pretty straight, so I mostly used this one. And lastly, it came with four skeins of thread, which basically looked like this when I took them out. And by the end of it, they ended up looking like this. I did kind of rewrap some of them, but everything else just kind of got tangled and then I was pulling at this tangled mess. If you're more organized than this, bravo to you. I tried to be organized and I still just... And lastly, it came with this embroidery hoop. So you just twist on it to loosen it up. It comes apart. And it does talk about this in the booklet. I must give the booklet a lot of credit. It does explain things very well on how to do things. So you just put the piece of fabric there, bring the little piece to the back, and push it through. 
and then tighten the top so that tightens the back piece in and then it gives you this nice flat structure to work on so everything's not so flimsy you have a nice kind of stiff piece of fabric to work on and then you needle through that however these little pieces of embroidery fabric are so small I ended up not really even using not really even using the frame too much it just kind of got in the way because the pictures that we're building you really need to go all the way to the edges of the frame and if you're trying to get down here if the frames in the way you have to move it anyways and reframe it and then reframe it and these are so small there's not a ton of other fabric in the way just making it flimsy so you could pretty much hold it pretty taut yourself so these are the designs I ended up making here's zero Jack and Sally and I did make it off center because I didn't count it does tell you to count and how to find the center but that's a lot of counting and a lot of work so I guesstimated and I was off by like a third so then to fill in this extra space I made this design and if you were just going to put it in the frame it wouldn't really matter if it was off because you could also trim around it but I have other ideas of what I want to do with these and so I did want to have something evening out the rest of the square so now review time the box does say it's for ages seven and up I would not buy this for a seven-year-old it says it's for all skill levels but really it's not it's not exactly for an advanced skill level but it's not for a beginner I say this namely because beginner cross stitches have it colored in so the beginner can just sew over the color they know what colors are going where and where to start whereas this just gives you blank cloths with nothing on it and you have to count yourself or figure out where you're going to where you're going to start and you actively have to keep counting the entire time I've been cross stitching on and on for the last 20 25 years and I made a lot of mistakes on these myself namely because I space out and don't count correctly which is what I did on both of these this one here I was excited because I thought I could just keep going keep going and not have to count and just be like okay go eight this way and nine this way but I would count nine and then like keep going so this one I actually had to widen things all the way around it because I wasn't paying attention and added extra stitches I also did have to go back on a certain section and redo it because I wasn't paying proper attention then when I did finish it and realized my moon was going to be way off center I had to go and fill in some extra spots just to make it look more normal so you can see my moon is a little fatter than the one in the picture namely up in here I made some mistakes and just all around it's a little fatter nextly on zero I thought I was doing a great job until I got to this ear area and things just seemed off you can see the ear area is a little off and I couldn't figure out what I had done wrong until I went to work on this nose and realized is that the bottom of his nose was supposed to be five stitches and I only did four which with all of this only being out four instead of five it made his face narrower and I had issues with how to fill his eyes in because if I made them the right size they'd just be attached to the side of his head and wouldn't have that white space in there so I really had to adjust everything all because of the one stitch count I was off down here so one stitch count off really made everything a lot more difficult for me so aside from being how difficult it is to count for counted cross stitch I also think it's not meant for small children around the age of seven being that it takes such a long time this one in particular looks super easy to do I thought I'd be done in like 20 minutes a half an hour this took me two and a half hours to do granted I get distracted really easily so I may have been text messaging and checked a few emails but still this took two and a half hours to complete and it's the smallest design they had in the book if it took me two and a half hours to finish this small design the smallest one in the book with the attention span I've been working on my entire life it might be kind of hard to get a seven-year-old to sit there forever and do all of these so I would not rate this for ages seven and up I would rate it for maybe ten and up 
Maybe eight and up if your child already has some cross-stitching experience. But I've worked with seven-year-olds before and I can't imagine them having the concentration, understanding, or will to complete all of these. The next thing I'd like to mention about this kit, I think the one thing it really could have used was a needle threader. I still have the thread in these just because it was so hard <laughs> to get in there. Each of these... So the directions do say to use two strands of the thread in here. Now my grandmother had taught me to use three, but these directions said to only use two, so I only used two. I honestly think it would have been nicer with three, but I was sticking to the directions, so I only used two. But each of these two also splinter into a bunch of other threads. See the other side. So it's trying to fit that through this little needle hole that just doesn't want to put those threads through. And it's not just the one. See, this is two. So it's trying to fit both of these through this little needle hole. And it just would have been a lot nicer if it had come with a needle threader. That also might have helped me not spend two and a half hours on this tiny image. I had to rethread my needle three times for this image. And getting those threads in there each time took a lot longer than I'd like. I feel like this kit also could have been improved if instead of coming in skeins like this, if the thread had come on little bobbins like this, that would have been super helpful because then I would still have them on bobbins like this and only take off the pieces that I need instead of having this ball of thread that I have to string through each time I want to get a piece off of. But I do love that it came with this embroidery hoop, even if you don't really need to use them for these tiny squares, because it is a nice frame. I really do love that it gives you this framing option, even though it doesn't have the framing option for all four, you really have to pick which one you like best. It is nice that it has at least one frame for your favorite. You can just hang on a wall, or if you were going to gift it to someone, I'd probably put a little bow on it, or maybe tuck back these pieces. But it's a super nice aspect to this kit that it does come with this frame. If you did end up loving the other images that you made, and you only have the one frame. If you go to any any of the craft stores, I got this at Michael's. So this is separate from the kit, but just letting you know in case you were curious, they do sell these little three inch by three inch frames and your picture would fit in there quite nicely. If it was, if I hadn't decorated everything. So if you did want to frame your tiny piece of art, these are great. They also sell these tiny embroidery hoops at Joann's Fabric and Michael's. I don't remember which store I got this at. I think they're about like $3.25 or $3.99 at Michael's and maybe a little cheaper at Joann's, but you can also use coupons. And so that's also a nice framing idea if you wanted to frame all of your images. So that's it for my Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas cross-stitch kit. If you have any other questions or feel like I didn't answer anything about the kit that you would like to know, please write it down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Well, thanks for watching everyone and have a great Halloween.